Uh, welcome to our ICNA ILF Quran webinar series. Inshallah, we'll be continuing the series today uh, with a presentation delivered by Sheikh Dawood Nasimi. And the uh, surah and verses that we'll be studying this time are Surah Al Zumar, verses 53 to 66. Please go ahead. Okay. Thank you, yes. brother. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, I'm sorry for the delay a little bit. Uh, uh, we are. Uh, we will be talking about uh, some verses from Surah Al Zumar, uh, verses uh, 53 to 66. Uh, these verses are uh, very beautiful and important verses of Quran that we all uh, want to hear and we all want to know about. Uh, the verses uh, start with uh, verse 53 in Surah Zumar, Surah number 39. Uh, that, uh, before I read the verses and explain the meaning, let me just give you a quick summary of these verses. These verses speak about the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that how forgiving Allah is. And no matter how much sins we have done, we uh, should not despair of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always have hope. Uh, and uh, then what should we do specifically to earn the forgiveness of Allah? Uh, Allah then gives us specific instructions that so that uh, we follow that and then all of our sins can be forgiven. Uh, then Allah also talks about the uh, scenario that people uh, would not uh, turn to Allah and would not care about Allah and eventually what kind of regrets and remorse they will have and uh, how it will be too late to express that kind of regret. Uh, and Allah explains that uh, basically all my uh, signs came to you and you denied that. Uh, and then Allah talks about uh, the next life, uh, how those people, uh, how they will have dark faces and how they will be uh, uh, you know, uh, having what kind of humiliation they will have in that life compared to people who turn to Allah, uh, how they will be delivered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to paradise and Jannah. And then Allah also explains after that, that Allah is the creator of everything and he is the guardian of everything. And if you understand this concept, you would never do shirk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is available and directly available and accessible. Uh, and then Allah also addresses the Prophet sallallahu that what are they asking you? They are, they are asking you as ignorant people to worship somebody else or something else other than Allah. Uh, they have not realized who Allah is and how if you do shirk or associate others with Allah, how it would waste all of your deeds and good deeds that you have done in this world and uh, in the next life you will have nothing and also uh, uh, Allah describes uh, that when you understand the majesty of Allah that some of that majesty will be revealed to us in the next life then uh, you would know that how much injustice people have done by doing shirk so these are uh, the main points of these verses to give you an idea now, the verses with verse number 53, Allah says, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanu rajim, bismillahi rahman rahim Qul ya ibadi alladhina asrafu ala anfusihim la taqnatu min rahmatillah. Which means, say to my servants, basically declare, announce to my servants that those servants who have exceeded all kinds of limits against themselves, those kind of servants who have transgressed against themselves, and they have done all kinds of sins, basically, tell them that do not despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
in spite of all kinds of sins that you have done, be hopeful to the mercy of Allah. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins. Why? Innahu huwa al rahim Because Allah, indeed, He is the all-forgiving and the all-merciful. So Allah is the one who His nature is to be ghafoor. One of His attributes is ghafoor, that He forgives and He is all-forgiving. So in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives all kinds of hope to all people, all kinds of people who have gone across all kinds of limits. You know, there are so many people among Muslims and non-Muslims who have done all kinds of crazy things in their lives, who have crossed all kinds of limits to the extent that they think there's no way for me that I can be forgiven by Allah. Or sometimes they have so much misunderstandings about Islam that they think Islam is no way applicable to me. Islam is not possible that I can follow it. Sometimes they have heard so many negative things about Islam that they say, oh, Islam cannot be a religion of God or a religion of justice and peace and excellence because of the media propaganda or other things that they have read about it in negative ways. Or sometimes Muslims themselves stop practicing Islam because of those kind of misconceptions or misunderstandings or hopelessness. Allah announces to all these people that in spite of all kinds of limits that you have crossed, in spite of all kinds of sins that you have done, you should not despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah can forgive all sins. The Prophet ﷺ explained this verse in much uh, different ways and in different hadiths. That one place it says, if your sins are from the earth to the skies, from the earth to the skies, you have done so many sins. Allah will forgive if you turn to Allah in a proper way, sincere way. Another place says, if there are mountains of sins, they can be forgiven. Another place, the Prophet ﷺ says that, a person who has done sins and asked for forgiveness, it is as if they have not done any sins. Another place, the Prophet ﷺ says that, كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمْ خَطَاءٌ وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَائِنَ تَوَابُونَ التَّوَابُونَ That every child of Adam, every human being basically uh, makes mistakes and makes uh, violations here and there, but the best of them are the people who Turn to Allah and uh, do repentance. So we all are prone to make mistakes and sometimes sins, but we should never become hopeless. And we should always turn to Allah back and have this hope. Allah is ghafoor and Allah is also ghafar. There is a subtle difference between these two words, although both words mean forgiving. Ghafoor means that Allah is forgiving regardless of the amount of sins. No matter how much sins you have, Allah can forgive that. Ghafar means that Allah is repeatedly forgiving. That even though you made the promise and you said, I'm not going to repeat the sin, then again you made the sin, then again you made the sin, then you come back to Allah, Allah can forgive you again. As long as you come sincerely with no intention of repeating the sin, Allah will forgive you. So that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's very important to bring this to the attention of other people around us that a lot of people have become hopeless. And also, 
a lot of other religions, they have gone to extremes for, uh, uh, because of not knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Ghafoor and Rahim. You know, in Christianity, Paul invented a theory of blood sacrifice, that Jesus died uh, be, uh, be, uh, so that sins of people are forgiven. Because, and, and not understanding that Allah can forgive sins regardless of the need for, uh, there's no need for bloodshed in order to forgive. Why there should be bloodshed so that Allah will forgive? Allah can forgive. He came up with this theory to make religion attractive for people. And other people do shirk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not understanding that Allah is directly available and accessible. They will go to other intercessors uh, and favorites of Allah and they turn to them and they think that they can intercede on our behalf in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we can our sins can be forgiven. A lot of shirk is because of not knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not knowing his nature of forgiveness, his uh, uh, attribute of forgiveness. So it's very important that we all understand and we share this knowledge with others that Allah is such a forgiving God that Islam explains that no other religion explains that way. That Allah is so close to each one of us, he's closer than our jugular veins. And he's that close and he's always available and accessible without any appointments, without any kind of uh, lines that we wait for, any kind of cues. He's available right away for us anytime we just connect our hearts to him. And he's full of mercy. Then Allah, after explaining this reality, explains the steps to earn the forgiveness of Allah. Some people, they just mention this, okay, Allah is all forgiving, and then some people, you know, misunderstand that or take advantage of this, and they, they don't know what to do to earn the forgiveness of Allah. Allah here gives us a three-step process, procedure. The first step, Allah says, وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ and turn towards your Rabb, towards your Lord, towards your caretaker. Turn in a repenting form towards your Rabb. You know, when people do sins, it's like turning your back towards Allah and you just ignore Allah and you do sins. But when you when you want to stop that, you need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Turn your face towards Allah. So the word Tawbah Yatubu in uh, Arabic in the Quran, where the Tawbah comes from this Tawbah Yatubu, it is turning. Turning towards Allah. Basically, not only you stop when you turn, so you're going on this direction, and you, not only you stop, but you turn backwards. You have gone in the wrong way. It's like you're driving in a road that, you know, you can get lost and many problems will happen. You stop and you turn. When you turn, now you have taken a step towards your Rabb, the one who is your caretaker, the one who has taken care of you for all of your life. He has fulfilled all of your needs. He has given you more than you can ask for towards that kind of God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, turn towards him. The second step, وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابُ ثُمَّ لَا تُنْسَرُونَ That second step is to surrender yourself, submit yourself to him before the punishment comes to you when you will not be out anymore. So after you turn to Allah, after you turn to Islam, or after you turn from some bad deeds as a Muslim towards Allah, and you realize that my path was wrong and the path of Allah is the best path for me and the most useful path for me, and you can see the truth of it, you can see the benefits of it in this world and in the next world, then you surrender yourself to Allah, submit yourself to Allah. This is the second step. This is Islam, basically, because even some, sometimes as a Muslim, we, have, we are surrendering ourselves to some in some aspects of life to Allah, but we are not surrendering ourselves in other aspects of, of life. 
you know, some people, when it, when it comes to prayers, they are surrendering themselves to Allah. But when it comes to the economic affairs of their life, the political affairs of their life, the social affairs of their life, they are following some other teachings other than teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do a submission in those areas that you have not submitted yourself. Surrender your will, surrender your choice. Say, my choice is now choice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From now on, I'm going to follow what Allah has asked me to do. Uh, so surrendering before following, surrendering is basically accepting Allah, accepting Allah's teachings and uh, accepting to be a servant of Allah, a worshiper of Allah, an obedient person to Allah. Before the punishment comes, the punishment can be different kinds of punishments. It can also mean that death and the day of judgment that will come, that the punishment of the day of judgment comes, and then the tawbah, the uh, repentance will not be helping you. This will be too late to ask for forgiveness because Allah says that I give you a lifetime opportunity, lifetime of opportunities, why you didn't turn in that time. The third step, Allah says in the next verse, وَاتَّبِعُوا أَحْسَنَ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابُ بَغْدَةً وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ that follow the best things that Allah has revealed, the best of what is revealed to you from your Lord, from your Rabb, before the torment and the punishment comes to you all of a sudden. that you would not even realize. Sometimes, so before uh, that, explaining that punishment, the nature of punishment, so Allah says that now start following. So the first step, you turn towards Allah. Second step, you submit yourself to Allah, accept his teachings, accept him, and accept the guidance. Third, practically start following that guidance. The guidance, that's the best guidance that Allah has sent. Among all the books that Allah has sent, this is the most complete guidance. The most beautiful guidance that Allah has sent. Follow this guidance. That Allah, your Rabb, your caretaker has sent to you for your own benefit before the punishment comes all of a sudden. Sometimes, you know, things happen all of a sudden. Death can happen all of a sudden. Sometimes, you know, we, we see that every day happening that all of a sudden you get into a car accident, into a different kinds of accidents, that you die right away. Natural disasters happen all of a sudden, hundreds and thousands of people all of a sudden die, and you have no more chance even to ask for forgiveness. So don't delay your tawbah, your repentance. Do it as soon as possible. And in other verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us in very beautiful words. One place says, Expedite haste towards forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another place is, uh, One other. There's no way. Sabiqu ila maghfiratin min rabbikum. Compete in seeking forgiveness of Allah, towards the forgiveness of Allah. You know, vie each other. Try to excel compared to other people in seeking forgiveness of Allah. This is... The point, the point is that do not delay, do not say that, oh, when I become old, then I'll go to Hajj, then I'll ask for forgiveness and all of my days. You know, how do you know that you will be alive until then? And even if you are alive, why do you want to live a life of sins all the time, a, a life of being away from Allah, a life of impurities, basically? Why? Why do you want to deprive yourself from the mercy of Allah the more you the more guidance of Allah you follow, the more mercy you receive and the more 
contentment you have, the more peace you will have, the more inner happiness you will have, the more hope you will have, the more... So your life in this world becomes very beautiful. Uh, you will have things that you, uh, you cannot have with millions of dollars uh, uh, unless Allah gives you, when you submit yourself to Allah, when you follow His guidance. Yes, you will still face some issues and difficulties in life, and those are tests of life that everybody has to go through. But do not wait because punishment comes, can come any time all of a sudden. And you will not even realize how it happened. And then after this, Allah explains different scenarios that people will have. Uh, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that uh, people will say, أَن تَقُولَ نَفْسُيَّ حَسْرَةً مَا فَرَّدْتُ فِي جَنْبِ اللَّهِ وَإِنْ كُنْتُ مِنَ السَّاخِرِينَ That some, uh, uh, some souls will say that, oh, oh to me, and they express regret and remorse. And they say that we really came short. We really came short in our duties towards Allah. And we did not do what we could. And we were from the people who were mocking at Islam. We were mocking at, at Allah's teachings in certain ways. We were mocking at some Muslims that, oh, look at this Muslim. He's, he's trying to follow everything. Just do one, these two, 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 one thing, two things, it's enough. Why are you trying to do everything, every teaching of Allah, you know? Sometimes you see among Muslims, they, you know, when a sister starts wearing hijab, then some even some family members try to comment in a negative way that say, oh, come on, why are you trying to do this and put pressure on yourself or some brothers when they start to go into masjid or something, you know, family members become, you know, instead of encouraging them, they discourage them in different ways. So Allah addresses all of this that, you know, you would be someday uh, facing that situation that you will regret for all of this. That I was mocking at Islam or Islamic teachings or Muslims or others. Another scenario, that uh, some souls will say that, a soul will say that if Allah had guided us, we would be also from the people of Taqwa. We would have also had, you know, uh, consciousness and, and, and uh, uh, piety, consciousness of Allah and piety and righteousness. So basically they are coming up with excuses that they are saying indirectly that Allah did not guide me or Allah did not show me the way. That's why I did not follow. If I, Allah had showed me the way, I would have also been like these other people. I would have also have taqwa. The third scenario uh, that Allah describes here, لو, أو تقول حين ترى العذاب لو أن لي كرة فأكون من المحسنين. That they say, a soul will say that when they see the punishment with their eyes, then they say, oh, if I had one more chance, then I would be from the good doers. So in other places of Quran, Allah explains this further, that people will say, oh, Allah, just send us back to the world. Just give us one more chance. I'll change everything. I'll change my deeds. I'll change my lifestyle, everything. Just give me one more chance. But it's too late to, to express those kind of regrets. Allah will say, you, have, you had a lifetime opportunity. Now, Allah responds to all these scenarios and all these people, says, Bala. قَدْ جَاءَتْكَ آيَاتِي فَكَذَّبْتَ بِهَا وَاسْتَكْبَرْتَ وَكُنْتَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ That, well, my signs came to you, my verses came to you, my teachings came to you, but you rejected them and you behaved arrogantly. And you re became disbelievers. So Allah explains that why you would say that, oh, if, if, if Allah had shown me the path, if Allah had guided us, or, if, uh, or, or this and that, Allah says, I send prophets, I send messengers, I send books, I send some warners among your family. Maybe someone was there to tell you among your relatives, among uh, you know other people in your town or in your city or in your country. 
somebody or in the TV or in the radio, or somebody should have, they didn't tell you, everybody can say that, yes, some mourners came to us. But why you didn't take their words seriously? Not only you rejected them, but you showed arrogance. What is this? Islam, you want me to follow Islam, to accept Islam? You want me to follow these teachings and become this and that, you know? And, and even sometimes some Muslims show arrogance towards some teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Come on, what is this? You're telling us in this 21st century, people go to the moon and everything. You're telling us to follow that book that was sent 14, 1500 years ago. You know, uh, they show this arrogance and they become disbelievers with that. So Allah says that my guidance reached you in different ways, in one way or the other, and you denied it. And this arrogance was the cause of your misguidance. It was not logic. It was not lack of evidence. It was not lack of uh, uh, books or guidance, but it was lack of your humbleness, lack of your sincerity, lack of uh, your turning to Allah that led you to all of this uh, now. And then the remaining verses, Allah explains that, that if you see the, these, these people in the day of judgment, in, in the next life, that uh, you will see these disbelievers with dark faces. With dark faces that, uh, uh, and, and they will be ending to Jahannam, that is the most appropriate for them, basically. I have to open this in my computer. I had only these many verses here. Yes, uh, uh, so there's a moderator and he said that if my voice is not clear, he will tell me or he will send me a text. So I have not received anything. I assume that everybody can hear me. And uh, also we have to stop in a few minutes. Uh, okay, so the verse 60 onwards. وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ تَرَى الَّذِينَ كَذَبُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ وُجُوهُمْ مُسْوَدَّةً أَلَيْسَ فِي جَهَنَّمَ مَثْوَى لِلْمُتَكَبِّرِينَ That Allah says that uh, in the day of judgment, in the day of resurrection, uh, you shall see that the faces of those who had lied against Allah have turned dark. Is hell not vast enough to provide a room to, the, to these kind of people? So those people who were really arrogant, uh, you know, they end up in the hellfire. Their faces are dark because of uh, the wrong things that they had done in this world, because of their disbelief, because of their hypocrisy and others. And on the other hand, for believers or those people who lived based on taqwa, that Allah will deliver uh, those people who lived based on taqwa, based on consciousness of Allah, they were pious, they were righteous, uh, and no, uh, no uh, uh, difficulty and no uh, pain and no sadness will uh, reach these people, no grief. And then, then the next two verses, Allah explains that Allahu khaliqu kulli shay'in wa huwa ala kulli shay'in wakil. That Allah is the creator of everything in the whole universe and he is the one uh, who is the guardian of everything so why would you not worship allah why would you not uh, submit to allah why would you not obey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why would you do shirk to allah while allah is the creator of yourself and everything around you and those people that you worship they are also created by allah and allah is also the guardian for you and for everything else so why would you uh, do the shirk to Allah belongs the treasures, the keys of the treasures of the heavens and the earth. And those people who reject the signs of Allah, then these people indeed will be losers. So Allah explains that if you understand who Allah is, that everything belongs to Allah, all the resources of this universe belong to Allah. Allah is the owner of those resources. If you turn to Allah, you can have access to those resources that Allah sees appropriate to you, and you he may give you. 
uh, and based on your uh, long-term benefits. So why would you do share? Uh, and then the next verse, قُلْ أَفَغَيْرَ اللَّهِ تَأْمُرُونِي أَعْبُدُ أَيُّهَا الْجَاهِلُونَ That uh, say that, do you uh, ignorant people, do you uh, want me or bid me to serve any others besides Allah? Do you want me to worship something else or uh, do servitude to something else or somebody else? Jahilun. Jahilun are the people, the ignorant people who reject the truth, who reject the knowledge, and they make decisions based on emotions and based on superstitions. Jahilun are the people who do not use their mind and their the logic and the logical evidences. Regardless of how much degrees they have, how many uh, years of education they have in college and university, they are still jahil, ignorant from Islamic point of view. If they live based on emotions and, and reject the truth and, and they do not give themselves a chance to listen to the truth and they are not using their mind properly. So, and then the, the next verse, the time is over, so I'm going to stop in a minute. That Allah says that we have sent the revelation to you, O Prophet, uh, and to people before you. Uh, we have revealed that if you associate anything or anybody with Allah based on their demands or their uh, requests, then all of their good deeds will be wasted. Uh, and you will be from the losers. So uh, anybody who do not believe in Allah or does shirk and die in that state, then all of their good deeds in this world will not will be wasted and in the next world will not be useful to them. Last verse, بَلِلَّهَ فَعْبُدْ وَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ Then worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and offer servitude only to him and be from the people who are grateful. So this is a quick kind of uh, random. There were a lot of verses uh, and that's, I tried to cover the meaning and some of the explanations. Now it's time for questions. Uh, there are a lot of questions that are coming uh, in the online, but it's hard for me to read. So if you can uh, uh, announce the questions. Yeah, Jazakallah Khair Sheikh Dawood. This is, um, you know, mashallah, very, very important topic. So, inshallah, the first question um, on the topic of Dawbah How can we increase the quality of our Dawbah? How can we move it from what is just a mediocre Dawbah to a high quality Dawbah or Dawbat al Nasuha? And here specifically, you know, sometimes when you make Dawbah in private, tears come from the eyes. Sometimes they don't. Yes. Does this mean something? And are there other signs for what is a high quality Toba? And how can we strive to make our Toba um, like a Toba to Nasuha? Beautiful question. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us, says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. O believers, turn towards Allah and do a tawbah nasuha that uh, our brothers mentioned, tawbah nasuha. What is tawbah nasuha? Basically, tawbah which is complete and which starts with sincerity, that you are sincere about it. You're also feeling regret for what you have done. You hate what you have done. You know, sometimes you have done something and you say, well, I, if I had another chance, maybe I'll do it again. That's So that's not how, no matter how many times you say, Allah, forgive me. Uh, so you start regretting and you start feeling the remorse in your heart, in your mind, and you feel really bad about it. And you kind of hate that thing, why I did this. That's really something wrong and bad that I did. So this is the beginning of Tawbah Nasuha. And then the second step that you make a decision, uh, of course, you know, so second point, we can say that you ask Allah for forgiveness. 
with this mode of repentance, with this mode of regret, say, Ya Allah, forgive me. Forgive me, and you ask it in a very sincere way that words come from the bottom of your hearts, and you can feel it, and as you said, that people can really, you know, have uh, those emotions in their heart and in their uh, tears come in their eyes when they feel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's presence and who is Allah and what I have done towards Allah. Uh, the third step is to say that I'm not going to repeat this and you make a firm decision. It's not only you stop the wrong action, but you say I'm not going to repeat it. To the best of your abilities, you make that decision very sincerely. And the fourth step will make the tawbah complete that if the sin involves the rights of other people, you return the rights of people. For example, you have taken someone's property, you know, your tawbah is not complete until you return the property of the person. Or you have offended somebody, you should ask, go and ask for forgiveness from that person. So the tawbah becomes complete with this fourth step, if that if the sin involves the rights of other people. Otherwise, those three steps that you're feeling the regret, you turn to Allah for forgiveness and you decide not to repeat it. Inshallah, will make the tawbah a complete tawbah. Uh, and uh, then you live a righteous life from now onwards, as the Quran told us that you, after you have submitted yourself, then you follow the guidance and obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, as much as possible. If you walk in front of the door, if you uh, there's which also. Shala, the next question. Um, yes. So, inshallah, the next question. When we think of sins, sins are obviously whether they're major or they're minor sins are bad, and we think of them negatively. But is it right to think of a sin if it provides an opportunity for tawbah and to become closer to Allah? Is it, is it correct or not to think of that sin as an opportunity to become closer to Allah and to see positive in it? Yes, it is correct to look at it that way, but after you have done the sin, not before you do the sin. So before we do the sin, we never look at it uh, in a positive way or as an opportunity because we want to avoid the sin at, uh, uh, as much as possible. But if we slip, and we are human beings, we slip here and there. Uh, no matter how much we try, still we will slip here and there. So when we slip as soon as possible, uh, we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask uh, for forgiveness. And then we look at this Tawbah as a process of growth, as a process of improvement, as a process of coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah loves those who turn to him and ask for forgiveness. There's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu also that Allah loves the people who, uh, you know, have sinned and they turn to Allah. Uh, so because now you have taken a lesson, now we have uh, become more mature, now you can live a more righteous life. Uh, because of the ex negative experience that you had with sin, so now most likely you will avoid that sin from now on uh, in better ways. Uh, so that can be a positive opp uh, an opportunity uh, uh, after the sin has been committed, but not before. Okay. If one has a past history, let's say many, many years ago, where they were not a practicing Muslim, say they were not praying, they were not fasting. And then with time, they now establish the habit of praying and fasting. Is the period of time where the Salah and the fasting was not done still considered to be uh, a sin that has to be made up? How should one approach it? Is it, is it sufficient to uh, ask for forgiveness for that period where one did not pray or fast, or do those things have to be made up? Uh, when we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and start to be more righteous or, or become righteous or start practicing Islam or uh, that we have not practiced before, so 
we start a new basically chapter of life. We start a new slate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for ourselves. And from that point onwards, we try our best not to repeat the wrong things that we have committed in the past. But some of those sins that can be compensated, some of those wrong things that can be mended, we should do that. We may not be able to do every wrong thing. We may not be able to repair every wrong thing that we have done uh, or every sin that we have done. For example, a person has not prayed for 20, 30 years and has not fasted. And now all of a sudden, you know, he starts practicing or, uh, uh, you know, so uh, it is not practical to repeat all uh, to make up for all of that. So you, uh, you know, you feel that sin and that load of sins that you have done and it's positive to think about it and continuously ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, throughout the life after that. And also uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa explained that uh, for prayers, uh, when you offer your sunnah prayers and nafil prayers, they can be counted for the far prayers, the obligatory prayers that you have missed in the past. Uh, so uh, there, is, there are different ways that uh, will compensate for the past. But if the uh, rights of other people are involved, as it was explained earlier, then we have to uh, return those rights as much as possible or as much as available for us and accessible to us. And we should uh, uh, live a righteous life from that point on, onwards with the best of our abilities uh, and whatever we can uh, do from the past to repair it, to uh, fix it, uh, let's do it. But if we can't do it, we ask Allah for forgiveness and inshallah Allah will forgive us as long as we truly turn to Allah in uh, sincere ways. Does our um, book of account completely close when we die? Or is it possible that some of our sins can still be forgiven even after we die because people continue to make dua for us, including our relatives? Uh, we all have hope that inshallah some of our sins will be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is forgiving. He's ghafoor and ghafar and rahim. Uh, but one sin that will not be forgiven if a person dies in that state is shirk. Associating someone or something with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or looking at something as uh, 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 make, looking at so important as, as uh, like Allah or making something equal to Allah or something compatible to Allah or uh, turning to other things that can be considered shirk uh, to worship other things or depend on other things like you should depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are different kinds of uh, shirk. Uh, if a person dies in the state of shirk, then Allah says that he will not forgive that sin. But other sins, uh, uh, we hope that Allah will forgive, but there should be also some uh, efforts that we have done uh, to ask for forgiveness in this world and also some good deeds that could replace those bad deeds because Allah says that the good deeds can replace the bad deeds. Uh, uh, and now this is for uh, Muslims, but for a non-Muslim who accepts Islam, all of the past sins will be forgiven completely. Uh, and a person is like a newborn baby uh, from that point onwards. So all of the sins that she or he has done in the past uh, they are uh, forgiven, including uh, shirk that they have done. So shirk can be forgiven if a person asks for forgiveness in this world and bring, uh, you know, then believe in Allah and then uh, submit to Allah and follow the teachings of Allah to the best of their abilities. Shirk also will be forgiven, but if a person dies in the state of shirk, not. Uh, uh, now, if there are a lot of sins, of course, there is balance concept, concept of balance in the next world, Mizan, that good deeds will be compared to bad deeds. Although Allah multiplies the good deeds by 10, but if still bad deeds exceed the good deeds, then people will be punished. So not all of the sins will be forgiven. But if we have tried to forgive, uh, seek forgiveness for some sins, uh, for, many, for almost all of our sins and a few sins here and there, 
are left that we did not ask for forgiveness, inshallah, we hope that Allah will forgive us. Exactly. Inshallah, this will be the last question. Um, can you list what are considered to be the major sins? Yes, so major sins start with a shirk, the first one that we mentioned, associating something or someone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are different kinds of shirk and uh, different uh, things that people worship. Sometimes the people worship themselves, people worship other people, people worship the statues, people worship sun and moon and different kinds of uh, uh, false gods. Uh, and then uh, other kinds of uh, sins, major sins, uh, disobedience to parents is a major sin. Uh, zina or adultery is a major sin. Killing, of course, comes after shirk. Uh, in, in, in taking lives of people, uh, and uh, in, you know, uh, without following a process of court or due process, and uh, taking life of people, uh, that uh, is a major sin. Uh, and you know, stealing and uh, lying and, uh, and not fulfilling your promises. Many, many, the list goes on and on. But some of those sins, major sins in Islam uh, that are considered sins in other cultures or other societies also, it is easily done and easily accepted by uh, a lot of people. But the challenge comes in those kind of sins that are not considered sins in other cultures or other religions for Muslims, especially living in America and Western world, that becomes a challenge. Sins such as you know, uh, uh, sexual relations outside of marriage, uh, sins uh, such as uh, homosexuality, sins such as uh, uh, you know, uh, having boyfriend, girlfriend and, and not listening to parents and mocking parents and that sometimes happens uh, uh, and many other similar things uh, or drinking alcohol or eating pork you know these things are the sins that are more challenging for muslims living in the western world that they have to pay attention these are major sins okay jazakallah karen so with that uh, we'll end um mashallah that was a very informative session may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to implement what we've learned today. Um, inshallah, we'll continue the weekly Quran series next uh, week, same time, 9 p.m. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruk wa atubu alayk. Audhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa la asr. Inna l-insana la fi khus. Illa al-lazina amanu wa amilu salihat. Wa tawasaw bil haq. Wa tawasaw bil sabr. Sadaq Allahu al-Azim. Zakulau uh, Khair, the video of this will be available, I guess, in the webinar. Okay, let's go. Alhamdulillah.